Hey, welcome back to Davis Media Access. We're in the studio today with local author Jean DeFazio, and we're going to be focusing specifically on this book today, Keeping the Dream Alive, which profiles the art and the work of Harriet Lawrence Nesbitt. And I want to welcome Jean, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Autumn. And I'm just going to share, um, Jean's authored a number of books, so I'm just going to rattle them off real quickly. You are uh, the co-editor of the following publications from WIF and Stock Publishers, Creative Ways to Build Christian Community, Berkeley Street Theater, and Empowering English Language Learners. You've co-authored a number of other books, including this one. And you basically grew up in Davis, right? Yes, I'm a, I'm a Davis, California resident since 1962. Right. Yeah. Well, you contacted me online, and uh, it, you were very interested in, in talking about this book in particular because Harriet had local some local connections as well or it was connected to you through the social justice work you did and so let's start by talking a little bit about who she was and why we're talking about her art today great Harriet Nesbitt was a New York artist a columnist the, pol the um, politics and such column at, in the Murray Hill News mm -hmm. and she was also an advocate for mentally ill youth through her foundation, Mothers for More Halfway Houses. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I um, met Harriet through my former boss, Michael P. Grace II, who was a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. And Harriet had, a, I'd never met her son, Larry, who died. Uh, he was a promising scholar and author. Mm -hmm. He had a bipolar problem, and he was released from a halfway house too early. He was off his medication, and he was run down in Dade County. Hmm. So that was very tragic for right. Harriet. Right. And um, Mr. She had she was a great networker in New York City. She had events, and the one I met her at was South Seaport. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had grown up and married into a uh, prominent social background. Mm -hmm. And so the party that where I met her and. And this is really dated, but it was Andy Warhol, Prince Albert <laughs> of Monaco, Andy Duke, mm -hmm. a famous, uh, founded the brother, uh, oh, Boys and Girls Harbor, mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. man. And um, Harriet's friend, Ann Pett, invited us. Now, Ann Pat was a colorful woman, mm -hmm. and a, fo a former stripper and a realtor in New York <laughs> City, but uh, just a great group of people right. were there supporting this cause. So, Hundreds of people. So out of her, her the pain of losing her son, yeah. she really became a, a social justice activist. Yes. Um, advocating for a, additional help for the, the mentally ill um, and for more halfway houses, obviously, the name of the organization. Yes. And a lot of her art reflects that. In just a few minutes, we're going to take a look at, at some of those paintings. So you connected and you served on the board of her organization, is that correct? I actually served on several committees. Okay. She was very good at bringing people in, a great, as I said, a great networker. Mm -hmm. And I recall uh, times when I supported her in uh, politics at, in the column, mm -hmm. where we covered a benefit for NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Health right, Illness. Right, of course we have a very active local chapter here. Which is great. Yeah. And, and she just was able, part of her skill in networking, she brought those people on the committees of her events. And, and she was an advocate. She wasn't a clinician. But she brought top psychiatrists into her organization because they believed in the cause and they wanted more exposure. I yeah. think one of the themes that really, one of my takeaways from the book is that she felt it was important to really destigmatize that's right. Mental illness. And she, she really was brave. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martha Reyes, in her foreword, um, interviewed Lori Chang and Lydia Chang, who mm -hmm. are uh, d from Davis. Mm -hmm. And they were very brave to come out and say, this is what I've gone through, and we want to be published, because we want a platform to help other people. Right, and yeah. she was there, a pastor's wife and daughter. Correct? Yes, wonderful. Uh, Pastor Howard Chang at the Chinese Christian Church. Yeah. Uh, uh, his wife and daughter. Right. Yeah. So that's a really important role that um, community leaders can take in helping to destigmatize um, mental illness. So let's go ahead and take a, a, a look at a couple of the paintings. Sure. I'm going to ask Diane to start with one, and if you can tell us oh. what we're looking at here. Okay, this is Mayor Koch, and Mayor Koch is in the Wagner LaGuardia archives, mm -hmm. and Doc, um, Mr. Professor DiCarlo 
uh, who I mentioned in the book, he's mm -hmm. footnoted because we needed to get permission, right. um, allowed us to use this um, digital image because as you see, there are wings of angels over, Co over Koch. Mm -hmm. And she adored Koch. I, I remember being in events meeting Koch before he passed. And uh, she really uh, loved Koch's, um, she loved his sense of self. She said, I, I, I was elected by the people, but, but God allowed me to get in. <laughs> Which was, you know, she, she believed that he, that he was g protecting and guarding New yeah. York City. It's a really good likeness of him. Yeah. Okay, and we're moving on to... Atomic uh, Madonna. Yeah. Atomic Madonna. <laughs> Tell us about this painting. Okay. This is Harriet, a likeness of Harriet and her son Larry. And of course, the, um, the cloud overhead is atomic mm -hmm. eruption. Mm -hmm. So Harriet, you know, she really was concerned and on um, many things, and this painting depicted her concern for annihilation by atomic weapons, and then also uh, concern over th what we're doing with the environment. Right, Yeah, and I'm sure it represents her and her son to some degree as well. That's right. right. And, and her loss, okay. Yes, and this is one of Harriet's, um, her most prolific and popular works were her horse paintings. And they're in the collection of very prominent people. Mm -hmm. And so I included four in the book. And uh, they're just vibrant and they're, they're uh, full of action. And uh, actually, she came from a family of privilege. She attended polo events. And she would paint these events and then sell the um, paintings to follow, you know, members of society, but mm -hmm. also to people who would uh, support her cause, hmm. yeah. And this is Sandy the Storm. Now, this is a later painting and the Motion Picture Council uh, president, B. Beyer, uh, after Sandy the Storm, uh, really loved this painting and gave her a, an award for artistic excellence. Hmm. B. Beyer and her wonderful daughter, Gemma, who, um, who has a television show in LA. Mm -hmm. So, so what, uh, I believe she saw this picture of a couple in, in a really uh, terrified state because all they had left was their porch. Right, this is yeah. after Hurricane Sandy, obviously. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so she, I'm, I'm envisioning that these paintings are fairly large, the, just the style that she painted in, and uh, are they acrylics, are they, are they oils? The, the artist in me wants to ask those sure. questions. Sure, yeah, I think they're oils mm -hmm. and acrylics, and uh, the Kennedy diptych is large. Mm -hmm. It's just very large, but Sandy the Storm is, you know, maybe four by five. Mm -hmm. uh, Koch is a little larger. And um, Atomic Madonna is, is, is standard size for right. a portrait. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now you've written about a, a variety of, of topics. Yeah. What was it about her work specifically that, you know, you can see a lot of paintings and it, they don't necessarily result in a book? Yes. Well, her desire to have to, uh, uh, the desire that she expressed that her, that her estate would, um, uh, the, the, uh, the paintings would be available to benefit mentally ill youth is why mm -hmm. her wonderful son Roger and the, her executors Martha and uh, her niece and nephew Martha and mm -hmm. Michael Nesbitt allowed me to do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's gotten, oh, it's gotten exposure. It's going to be in the Harvard Holiday Edition book list, oh, which wonderful. is 400,000 hard copy and out of probably millions online yeah. because um, her idea was that she wanted more exposure to the cause. Mm -hmm. And this is why I came down here today and I'm so grateful to you. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. sure, thanks for reaching out about it. Um, so are you, have you been speaking about the book locally or is it, um, I know it's available online I, and I know that people can get more information from uh, the publisher's website which is WIF, but that's spelled W-I-P-F as that's in correct. Frank and stock. Dot com, and yes. I think Diane will put that up at the end. Um, people can get it online, but are you, you know, are you invited to go and speak about the book? We have um, more plans for this book. Um, it's also at Walmart, and it's also at Walmart.com, and it's uh, on Amazon, of course, okay, in so. Kindle and hard copy. So um, w one of the plans we have, because one of the forwarding uh, authors, Julia Davis, is a Harvard graduate. Mm -hmm. um, 
Sh is uh, we're going to film at Gutman. She has a master's in education from Harvard. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're going to take her three books, and this is one of them, do a panel discussion. Mm -hmm. And then I find um, when we, as you do, when mm -hmm. we film, and then I, we can send the film, the clips at least around, we have a greater exposure. Right. Yeah. Right. And that seems in, in keeping her dream alive, in, in keeping her, her intent alive to really continue uh, raising awareness of, I don't know if it's bipolar specifically or mental health in general and how it affects young people. And I think you probably know this today, we just have an epidemic with <laughs> depression and anxiety and bipolar. And it seems like our, our, uh, our youth are really at risk for that. I acknowledged uh, my Uncle Jerry, who was the director of Yellow County Mental Health, mm -hmm. and his son, Michael, who's the, uh, is the dean of the St Psychiatric School of Medicine at Riverside, and my wonderful cousin, Louise, who has been a psychiatric social worker, and uh, their brother, Michael. The whole family's devoted, mm -hmm. who I believe he, he, uh, he treats mentally ill people in the, in the penal system. Yeah. I, I acknowledge people who have been lifelong pioneers and you know really helping people you know come to terms with what's going on in them and find a happier, healthier life. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, and uh, you know you're helping a great deal just letting me be here today. So thank you. <laughs> well, it's you. been a pleasure to bring you in and talk to yeah. you. I want to thank you, and I want to just show this one more time to okay. let people know we've been talking about this book, Keeping the Dream Alive, and with author Jean DeFazio. And thank you so much for coming oh, in today. Yeah, thanks a lot. You can tune in to our whole archive of In the Studio um, online at dctv.davismedia.org. It airs live on, or not live, it airs on Tuesday evenings, and uh, we put up an archive on YouTube as well. So you can look for it there under Davis Media Access. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and we'll see you next time in the studio.